Regulars to this channel will know that Dusk is my favorite Arknights character. Going to the extent of getting all of her skills to M3, as well as she is currently my only level 90 operator. Though with a lengthy conversation that I had two months ago, and running some numbers in a calculator, I have come to the conclusion that Dusk is actually terrible in the long term. What I'm referring to here is her module. Something that Dambo and Iron Cobra won't ever have to worry about. But before we get into that, let's re-familiarize ourselves with Dusk's skills. So going over her talents, her first talent allows her or her freelings to give her an attack buff up to 30% after 15 kills and will summon a freeling on the first attack whenever she is deployed. Dusk skill 1 does massive AoE damage and can have multiple charges. It is effectively a Splashcaster version of AS skill 2, but without the res shred. Dusk skill 2 is effectively Gatano's skill except better in every way, adding extra attack, attack speed, and an attack bonus against enemies with 50% HP or less. Dust skill 3 being the most unique out of the three, summons a freeling after every attack, gains a huge attack boost, but attacks slower, but summons a freeling after every attack. Her range now becomes the same as Mastima's skill 3. It is worth noting also that Freelings also have 2000 health, 400 attack, 300 defense, 50 res, 2 block, and deal arts damage. So with Dust's skill set, she can still be very effective in specific scenarios. For an example, in the background is the Prison Annihilation, and with her skill 1, she can effectively wipe out these large amount of enemies consistently. And I feel that is Dust's specialty. As long as there is more than three or four enemies consistently within an area, she can still shine. But a problem that she has been running into lately is that there has been more and more competition in AoE damage, especially for arts damage. And many of these operators that are her competition get a lot better modules. So let's look at some examples of some modules that are done very well. To start things off, we have Passenger's first module. And in the title here with the attack, that is his base attack plus the trust. So that is without any module bonuses. So if you want to do the math on that, that is the base attack of a level 90 passenger without any module bonuses. So with his module, his first one, he gains additional SP recovery and also lengthens the duration of his short slows. And a big thing that passenger struggled with was getting the uptime of his skill 3. So that additional SP recovery really helps him out here, as well as giving him even better crowd control. His second module makes it so that each jump between targets no longer deals less damage, but he no longer gets the bonus slow duration. So this module is a good alternative if you want Passenger to completely focus on his damage dealing capability, as well as giving him a super high base attack bonus of 100 at the level 3 module. So going out of the casters, we have Guard Chen's module, which gives her a lot more damage with her skills by 10%, as well as giving her much better SP recovery. And on top of that, she gains quite a big attack buff as well as plus 80 and a little bit of attack speed to gain that extra SP faster. 
The additional SP recovery also affects all other allies that have attack or defense recovery, so it makes her a lot better utility compared to what she was before. Guard Scotty is typically not known as being a widely used operator, but with her second module, she gained a quite substantial attack buff, and in my opinion, allowed her to play the playstyle that Guard Scotty was somewhat designed around. So she gains an attack buff when blocking enemies, and reduces her redeploy time all the way down to 40 seconds. And that makes it so that she is almost as fast as a fast redeploy, or at least the slower fast redeploys. And she gains such a big attack buff. So now you can use Guard Scotty with this module as a hella droppable stat stick that can deal quite a bit of damage to those tougher enemies. So before we get to Dusk's module, I do want to talk about the typical drawbacks that you have when you use splash casters. And to go off the list, they have very short range. They typically have very high DP cost of around 30 or higher. Very slow attack interval of 2.9 seconds, which I think is the second slowest out of any archetype. And to top it all off, they don't usually deal enough damage or provide enough utility to make them worth using with all of these other drawbacks. So let's look at how Hypergriff dealt with Mastima's module first. Mastima for a long time has been regarded as a very weak 6-star, being very niche. But with her module, she gains quite a bit. And in my opinion, allows her to be her own... makes her niche powerful enough to be possibly worth using in specific scenarios. So, she gains reduced deployment cost of minus 8, so no longer being 34 is quite nice, and additional attack speed. For her level 2 and level 3, she gains much better slows in her attack range, and also provides a global slow even outside of her range. So with her skill active, she can get up to minus 90% movement speed towards enemies. And with potential, she can get up to 99%. So, in those times where you are facing enemies that cannot be blocked, or cannot be binded for some reason, and slowing is your only option, Mastima might shine now in those specific scenarios. So when looking at the list again, Mastima's module didn't address her short range, but it addressed her high DP cost, made her attack slightly faster, and provided her enough utility to have some use in very specific scenarios. So without further ado, let's look at Dusk's module. So what does Dusk get with her module? And she gets max HP. On a caster, that can already potentially get up to over 1800 HP. Outside of the Phalanx casters, this is possibly in the top 5 of all of the casters in general. So for a splash caster that is primarily focused on dealing damage, this is not a very good start. On the plus side though, Dusk does get an extra tile of range. But at the same time, though, two out of the three skills that Dusk has gives her range extensions. So that isn't a very high priority for Dusk, in my opinion. So kind of an odd choice. Even with all that being said, though, I still think that her level 1 module isn't actually that bad. I mean, gaining an extra tile of range helps especially with her skill 1, which, from my experience, seems to be her best skill all, all around, unless you're depending on her freelings to stall an enemy. So without further ado, let's look at her level 2 and level 3, though. 
So for her level 2 module, she gains 5 extra stacks of the Sublimity buff. So effectively an extra 10% attack if Dusk can finish off 5 more enemies. In my opinion, 15 stacks was the sweet spot for Dusk of being able to consistently get the maximum stacks and be able to take advantage of those stacks by the time a stage ended. Unless you're doing Annihilation, then the stacks are a non-issue. But when it comes to 20 stacks, that's kind of getting close to the point of... I would think to not necessarily consistently get that up all the time. And the attack bonus that you get from level 1 to level 2 is not great of only plus 13 attack. But overall an extra 10% attack even though it's conditional it's still okay enough. Uh, her level 1 is definitely still the best in my opinion. But when it comes to her level 3 module oh dear as you can see, she only gets one more stack of her Sublimity buff, and an extra 12 attack. And while she does get slightly more HP, I'm not really counting that because Dusk really shouldn't be taking damage in the first place unless it's splash damage. So I have to say that going from level 2 to level 3 on Dusk's module is quite possibly one of the biggest waste of resources that I've ever seen in all of Arknights. Because you are spending 4 highest tier materials for 2% attack that is conditional and 12 base attack. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, thought, who thought that was a, a good idea? <laughs> so, all in all, with Dusk's module, it does give her some okay bonuses. And, like I said before, the range extension is very useful on her skill 1. But when we compare her module to all of the other modules that we have looked at previously that got massive bonuses that made it so that these operators stood out and allowed them to be possibly noticed when they were being underutilized, Dusk hardly gets anything. I mean, nothing to provide her any more freelings, unless you're using skill 3. And her attack buff is conditional. So, in, in my mind, good luck getting 21 stacks consistently on stages that only have 30 enemies, because she has to be the last one to deal the finishing blow to the enemies for... To, for her to get those stacks, and on top of that, whenever she is retreated, those stacks reset. So, overall, very lackluster, and on top of that, the flat attack bonus, especially on the level 3 version, is only plus 80. That's lower than Mastima, and Mastima focuses more on crowd control from what I've seen. So, on a more damage focused Splashcaster, she gets less base attack than Passenger, even though that Dusk has 25 to 30 percent better base attack by default, she gets less attack bonus from her module. And Passenger provides crowd control on top of his AoE damage, or pseudo AoE since it's chaining. So pretty disappointing and I have to say that from what I've seen anyway is Dusk module is probably the most disappointing one I've seen. 
So instead of just talking about how bad her module is, how about giving some suggestions on how could have Dusk's module have been interesting and giving her a little bit of extra attack and utility in order to make her more usable in today's Arknights, or at least when the level 2 and level 3 modules come out for global. So this is a fan-made module that I came up with for Dusk in that said community post at the beginning of the video. So this is what I came up with. This is essentially her flexibility module, which is essentially a just a better version of the one that she currently has. So instead of the max HP, we're going to get rid of that and add attack speed, as well as give a much needed higher base attack. And on top of that, the sublimity buff, instead of adding more stacks, giving each stack an attack speed buff. So, at the level 3 module, Dust gains 25 attack speed when she has all of her stacks active. And on top of that, I came up with the idea of Dusk refreshing or summoning a Freeling every 30 seconds on the next attack. So, keep in mind that Freelings expire after 25 seconds. So, there's 5 seconds of downtime, even if you keep the Freeling alive, that a Freeling can spawn. And also the summons directly in front of Dusk, so hopefully uh, the Freeling doesn't block enemies outside of Dusk's attack range, and also the Freelings gain higher stats. So this one would be really good with her skill 3, making the Freelings be able to stall much better, and I have experienced that Dusk's attack speed debuff on her skill 3 is so long in some cases, where she can't even effectively stall some bosses or some faster enemies, and that can be very frustrating. So hopefully this will give her the flexibility she needs to be able to fulfill that role a little bit better. I also came up with a second module that was inspired by a comment that I had when showing off that first module, and this is more of a complete damage focused version of Dusk's module. So instead of adding the extra range, she gets the attacking block enemies increases attack to 110%, similar to W's module. And instead of the max HP, I went with defense plus. And that is because with how high Dusk's HP is, I find that in my personal opinion, finding other ways of increasing her survivability, either through defense or res, would be much more useful. And also the extra defense would make uh, using Dusk with Auk a lot easier. And also having the exact same attack bonus. So with each stack, I went instead of 2%, having 3% instead of adding more stacks, having it be 15 times with 3%. So it actually comes up on top with the total attack bonus without making it cumbersome on the lower enemy count stages. But what I have interesting is the level 3 here. So every 10 seconds summons a Freeling on the next attack. Freeling summoned while well, her skill 3 is not active, there would attributes are reduced to 50% and expire after 5 seconds. So they're not going to be permanent here. So 5 seconds of downtime, but she can respond them every 10 seconds. And freelings with that die or expire grant Dusk extra SP. So the idea on this is that she keeps her extremely slow attack speed with the rest of the splash casters. But at the same time, though, she should be doing a lot more damage, and her Freelings, in some scenarios, might actually be able to come in clutch. Also giving her extra SP for skill uh, uptime to compensate for the lack of range and the lack of attack speed. So 
Choose the first module if you want flexibility, and this one if you want attack per hit. So lastly, I wanted to give a suggestion if if the previous two modules that I came up with are a little bit overtuned and might make Dusk a little bit overpowered, I came up with this instead as an alternative. And I will admit that I wouldn't want Dusk to be overpowered. We have enough overpowered limited operators already. We don't need another one. So this one essentially has combines a few ideas from the previous ones. So get rid of the attack max HP for attack speed, as well as increasing the attack bonus per buff, like in the second module, and also increasing the flat attack to a higher amount. And I think if Dusk had these bonuses, she would pretty much stay where she currently is at before the module upgrades for certain operators come out to to overtake her. So this would keep her in line to roughly where she is now, I think, being very powerful in a specific niche scenario, but not really meta in any way. And so this would hopefully give her, give her enough for that. Although I, I think if there is a possibility that Hypergriff didn't do this because they don't want potentials to directly increase in value, so for an example, Dusk gets three extra stacks with her potential five, and obviously with a module increasing the effectiveness of each stack, that might be worrisome, uh, being increasing the effectiveness of a uh, pay to win option so to speak so there is a possibility for that and if that's the case though I would much rather them getting rid of the sublime sublimity buff and doing something with the freelings making it so that dusk is more unique and have more of a niche rather than just giving her more stacks that she might not even be able to get on some stages. So it is what it is in uh for that. If that is the case, um I guess her module her level 1 and level 2 is fine if they increase her base attack and maybe give her attack speed and then maybe on the level 3 do something with freelings. I don't know. With all of that being said, though, if Hypergriff comes out with a secondary module for Dusk, considering how underwhelming her current one is, it would probably power creep her current one pretty easily, if it's any good. So, unfortunately, Dusk is almost better off just being left alone to her paintings. I guess I can find comfort in that she is fun to use in IS2 in integral in integrated strategies and is sometimes used in elite zero runs but as it is right now I don't know what I was expecting but I expected more from her module but I guess she's better off being left alone <laughs>